is your host, Manal Bukhari from 10 Minutes of Hiding Wisdom, who is on a mission to get you that dream job that you want. Today, we have a very special guest who is well known in Silicon Valley as a strong, strong advocate for women an advancing woman in science and technology. She has received the Silicon Valley of Influence Women Award and is the author of Amazon's two number one bestsellers. I'd like to welcome Jennifer LeBlanc. Hi, Jen. How are you doing? How's Canada treating you? I'm great. Thanks, Anal. It's great to, uh, to talk to you again. <laughs> How is Canada? It's lovely. We have a beautiful sunny day. The daffodils are blooming. Spring has sprung, so it's lovely. I'm glad to hear that. And I'm glad that you settled in during the pandemic. Must have been hard. Yeah, I, I highly do not recommend changing, <laughs> moving to a new country during a global pandemic. No, I don't recommend it as a general rule. Okay, we'll keep that in mind, especially yeah, for people don't do who that. are considering of moving. <laughs> yeah, wait till the pandemic. So Jen, can you share? I think so. I think well, let's keep that in mind. But when will it be over is the question. Yes, that is the question. Believe me, especially as an event organizer, that is the question. <laughs> So Jen, can you share uh, share about your journey and how and why you started Think Results Marketing, which was ranked as 2017's 10th fastest growing private company in the Silicon Valley, which is a very big deal, of course. Yeah, so I started Think Results really honestly because I needed more flexibility. I had a young child at the time. She was four years old and the time and space requirements of a corporate position at that point, I was a director and looking at a VP position. It, we're just not compatible, frankly, with my life and trying to be you know, a mom to my child at that time. And so I decided that I needed to start my own business. I had mostly been self-employed, but when I got pregnant, I just suddenly decided that you know corporate life seemed very attractive. Um, but I grew a little disillusioned, let's put it that way. And then I also just wanted more variety. When you're working for yourself, you have many different bosses. It's not like you don't have a boss. You just have more of them, frankly. Um, and they all think they're the only one, which is fine with me. I like them to think they're the only client that we have, of course. Um, but each one of those has their own requirements. But there's just a lot more diversity and and variety in the work that you do when you have your own company versus when you are in a corporation and your swim lane is an inch and a half wide and well you can't do that because that's not your responsibility that's so and so's responsibility because when you own your company everything is your responsibility so it's it's the double-edged sword right you have to do everything but you also get to do everything and touch everything so that was really nice that's very focus. true and how ha how has your experience been generally, like with Think Results Marketing and everything from move, working as a corporate director and moving to your own business? How was the transition? Would you recommend people starting their own business after what you did and everything, especially when you were pregnant and everything, the transition? Can you maybe elaborate a little more on that? So absolutely. I highly recommend, I, especially for women, I believe <laughs> that you know owning your own business is the path to economic independence, which is my goal for every woman. So I absolutely think that it's the best way. It is not for the faint hearted. You know, there is not a paycheck that comes every two weeks. Although now there is, because now I'm an actually employee of my own company. But in the beginning, there is not a paycheck every two weeks. You get a paycheck and you get a you know, big payout and then there's nothing for a while. And then you get a big payout and then there's nothing. So that can be very, very challenging if you've gotten a paycheck every two weeks. You know, it's a very stressful roller coaster. Entrepreneurship is absolutely a roller coaster, and your job is at risk every day. Every day. The reason we call ourselves Think Results is because we focus on driving results in marketing, right? Because if we are not driving results every day for our clients, we are out. So we have to be focused on that. There's no off days. So, again, it's the good thing and it's also the bad thing. So, you have to have a certain, you know, people have talked to me about, you know, entrepreneurs they seem to be missing certain risk chips in their brain. You know, like we don't see cliffs. We see wings, okay. not the cliffs, right? My, my first statement when I opened up Think Results, and this is now like 18 years ago, I, I had no models, no mentors, no one I knew who'd done what I did. And I, every day I would say to myself, leap, I get down, I sit down, I type, I do leap, and the net will appear and I get to work. Every day I told myself that because I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, 
I don't know anybody. Well, at that point I did, I had a pretty good connection to Silicon Valley, but I had started my first business actually in the US before I knew anyone, I knew no one and they were successful those. And I'm like, well, this time I know a lot of people, I've got a great network, you know, I have good connections within, you know, biotech and high tech software. And I've done this several times. So I have all these advantages, but there was still a sense of like, what the heck are you doing? You left a perfectly good corporate job with healthcare benefits for your family that were excellent benefits, you know, and really good pay. And they thought I walked on water to do what? But 18 years later, I'm still here. So it seems to have worked out. I mean, you're in Canada, you have a family around you, you're in a beautiful house, and I think it worked out well then. I think it worked out. So, um, Jen, I'm glad it did. So, Jen, you've done a lot of work regarding um, empowerment of women. I come from Pakistan, so as in, like, a lot of women are solely dependent on men for their income. And it's very interesting to see your even mm-hmm. your book, Changing Tide, which was a wonderful book, by the way, speaks about um, the disparity that exists between men and women when it comes to funding for their businesses. So just curious as to wh- how and why your work has been centered so much around women and um, so I think empowerment. That's a, that's a two-part answer, to be honest. And um, one of them is that when, after I wrote Launching for Revenue, my first book, which is about how to launch a company successfully, I had been advising several companies through Microsoft for startups, working directly with several startups in Silicon Valley. And it just became clear to me that, you know, even if the female founders do everything I tell them to do in launching for revenue, which they usually do, by the way, step by step, when you give a woman, like, here's how to do it, she'll just do it. Um, they still may not be successful because of the environment in which she is functioning. And it occurred to me at that point, I was like, you know, you know, uh, at that point, it was 2017. So there were certain things that were starting to happen in the Valley there, you know, that how women lead fund was a twinkle in Julie Castro Abrams eyes. And that's now been launched. There were several other new funds that were starting to, you know, talk about raising money and building funds for female founders. There were new groups forming for female founders. And I had this sort of like, palpable sense that there's something going on here and there's all these different points of light that are doing these amazing things but they're not connected to each other and that from the position that i sat in with having all these experiences and these connections i was like if you don't do something about this to make to shed more light on what all these organizations and individuals are doing then you're part of the problem Jennifer. so in the midst of almost finished in launching for revenue writing it, I started writing Changing Tides. So I don't recommend that either. Don't publish two books in a year. Not a good idea. Um, my family is very forgiving is all I can say. Uh, so that was really the reason why I thought we needed to do Changing Tides. And the second reason, to be perfectly honest, I'm going to give kudos to my mother, um, who is a human rights um, investigator here in Canada and is responsible for many of the groundbreaking changes that have happened over the past 30 years for women at work in Canada. So I think there was certainly a little bit of, you know, the tea bag was steeped in the water of you know, women's equality and equity. And so I began to see coming from a science background, there's a fair amount of inequity there. And moving into tech, I was like, God, science was way easier as a woman than tech is. And you have power, influence and authority, use it to make a difference for other women. So it just, it really became a call, to be honest. That's a beautiful story, especially kudos to you and your mom who have done so much work for women and just like by empowering them, making women actually be aware that there is a disparity that exists and how to take control over their businesses, their lives, and making sure that they become financially independent, which is something that's very important. And that's what my dad has always advocated for as well, because he's like, you need to first make sure that you are financially independent more than anything. Absolutely. And then you can live out your dream and do whatever you want. So um, I said, I would, <laughs> I, I like to think so. So Jen, you've you've written two books, you've started your own businesses. What is one 
key piece of advice that you would give to people specifically about when they're looking for jobs, if they want to start their own business, what should they do to make sure that they can actually get that dream job, they can get their own business on starting? What is something that you would recommend? I always recommend, since I'm a researcher at heart, research. (laughs) And specifically, if you are looking for a job or you want to start a business in a certain area, that research should take the form of researching people. So when I was at PeopleSoft, for example, I had the, it was a very, uh, well, let's just say low level job that I had. It was very simple as the person who um, brought me into the role said, you can do this with your eyes shut. Well, maybe not with my eyes shut, but it took 40% of my day to do the job. So the other 60% of the time I would reach out to a vice president that I saw handle a conflict of two individuals that were trying to derail a meeting and said, you know, that was really amazing. I'd like to take you out for lunch and I want to learn how you did that. Or, you know all about crystal reporting, Mr. Engineer. Can I take you out for lunch and you tell me about crystal reporting and how we do that? I mean, seriously, it ran the gamut from soft skills to technical skills. And I listened to webinars because when you're a big company, they have all these internal trainings that are totally free for employees. Take them all. So my advice is if you're in a big company, you've got the keys to the kingdom in terms of all that training, use it. And then if you're not inside a big company, reach out to your network and talk to people. And if they don't have a lead for you, they certainly have information always, right? How did they get where they are? right? Exactly what you're doing, right? How did they get where they are? What did they need to learn? Who did they need to reach out to? And then ask them for two other people to talk to. That's wonderful. So that you just continue to expand that network. For sure. And I think social media technology has allowed you to do that. Like before you had to write letters. Now it's just like connecting to someone on LinkedIn and just being like, hi, I read what you do. Can we get a, can we get on a coffee, virtual coffee even? So thank you. That is definitely very useful. Thank you so much, Jen, for joining us and for doing so much for women like us out there. It's women like you that make us want to get out there and actually pursue our dreams. That's it for today, folks. Thank you for joining Jen and I for this wonderful episode. (laughs) 